We want to welcome everybody today to our Healthy at Home webinar. Um, we're excited today to have Kayla Cook. She's from Valley Behavioral Health. Um, Salt Lake County Aging and Adult Services has a partnership with Valley Behavioral Health where they provide some mental health services to our senior centers. So we're excited for that partnership and glad that Kayla's here. She's the Senior Wellness Coordinator for Valley Behavioral Health. And she's going to be talking today about self-care which I think is a really important topic and a good reminder for all of us. Um, but before I turn the time to her, I just want to remind if you are a Salt Lake County employee and want healthy lifestyle points, I'll be putting the link in the chat for you to be able to do that. But we'll just turn the time over to Kayla. Hi everyone, I'm just gonna share my screen and get this started, I'm very excited. Hold on one second. I was able to figure this out just before it started, so hopefully I can figure it out again. <laughs> okay, can everyone see just fine? Awesome. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about self-care, or the more technical term here, is looking out for the well-being of yourself and others. So self-care is a really broad term. Um, obviously, there's a lot of self-help books, self-help um, techniques that we can follow. This one is specifically targeted towards caregivers of any type. Um, if you are not a caregiver, that is okay. This will still be very informative for you. Um, we are all essentially caregivers to someone, right? Whether it's our friend at the senior center, our sister, our daughter, someone that we're taking care of in some capacity. I think this could benefit um, all of us to some extent. So we'll get started with that. Um, first, I want to talk about our Pearl sessions. So I don't know how many of you guys visit your local senior centers, but um, if, if you do visit your senior center, we are presenting and working with um, senior centers in Salt Lake and doing PEARLS programs, which is an evidence-based program that helps anyone with dementia to any capacity. You don't have to be clinically depressed, or not dementia, sorry, <laughs> depression. You don't have to be clinically depressed, but if you are experiencing any sort of depression, or if you know anyone that is, that is a senior that attends that senior center, we offer four free sessions with this PEARLS program to just help um, take initiative in your life, do some goal setting, problem solving, and move forward with that. So just letting you guys know about our pearls program. So for today, some things I want to do is I would like to get everyone engaged. I don't like to just lecture and talk the whole time. I like to hear different opinions and views of all of you guys. I'm sure everyone has some great experiences and stories they'd like to share. So if you do, I can't see everyone. So feel free to just unmute and say, hey, can I say something? I'm totally happy to hear that. I'll also have some questions to start as well. But the objectives for today are to explore self-esteem and social well-being, learn different ways to boost your self-esteem, and ways to improve your connection with others as caregivers or just as yourself. So one little fun fact I want to share with you guys is our belief about ourselves. It affects our life choices, our level of motivation, the quality of our relationships, resilience to adversity, as well as our vulnerability to stress and depression. So it's really important that how we feel about ourselves and how we view ourselves is in line and healthy because it can affect every aspect of our life and our relationships with other people. So this will be a good way to fine tune our self-esteem and see where we're at with how we feel about ourselves. Um, as caregivers, we cannot pour from an empty cup. If we are taking care of someone as a friend, as a companion, as a sister, mother, daughter, we cannot take care of someone unless we take care of ourselves first. It's not fair to them. It's not fair to us. It's not a healthy dynamic. So it's really important. It's not selfish to take a step back and focus on yourself. So to start, I'm curious just to hear where we're our baseline, where we're at right now. How do we all balance helping serve others and take care of others with taking care of ourselves? How are we currently doing that right now? Feel free to unmute and share. It is hard to do without feeling guilty, Marianne commented in the chat box. That's true. It's hard to balance serving others and 
it's hard to not feel guilty if you're taking care of yourself. If you take time off to go on a jog or read a book, you feel kind of guilty, right? That's true. Does anyone else feel that way? Or what are we doing to try and balance that right now on our own? There's no right or wrong answer, so don't be shy. Hopefully we can get one more taker. If not, we'll just go forward. I have right. something. Oh, yeah. I, I am making it a point to walk two miles every day. And, and I've got to put that first instead of feeling guilty about it. Uh, but make that an, a uh, make that a priority. I agree. That's so important, right? Make it a priority. Put it in your schedule in your day to day routine. That yeah. this is a priority to take care of myself. I love that you have that goal to walk two miles. That's amazing. Great well, to have some goals. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's doable. It's just I got to do is. it. Yeah, it is. It's just the getting yourself to do it, right? It's getting myself to do it, right? Love that. That's great. Thanks for sharing. Okay, so I'm going to start with showing you a fun little, oh, wait, sorry, really quick. We got a chat says, I cherish bubble baths every night. Oh, that's awesome. You know what? Bubble baths are a great form of self-care. You can take a break, reflect, and it is not selfish in any way. You're cleaning your body. You're cleaning your mind, your soul. I think that is awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I like this little chat box comments. That's great. Okay, let's talk about our identity. So our self-worth kind of comes down to the way we view ourselves and form our identity, right? So Stephen Covey, he wrote the book called Seven Principles of Highly Effective People. And in this book, he has the wheel of identity here. And if you look here on the right, you see all these things surrounding the circle in green, work, spouse, family, money. These are all different identities that we all carry and different titles that we all have. Are we a wife? Are we a husband? Are we a mother? Are we a sister? Um, are we an accountant? Are we a janitor? Are we rich? Are we poor? I mean, we all have different identities and carry different titles. But is that who we are deep down? If we were to strip away all those things and put them on a the table and wheel that table away from us, what are we left with? Who our true selves are is our principles and our core values. Are we an honest person? Are we, do we have a sense of humor? Do we have integrity? Do we have self-worth in ourselves, to, I mean, confidence, all those core values is really what makes us who we are. It's not our titles. So sometimes when we replace that center of our wheel of identity with our title of being an accountant or being a stock trader, then when we lose that, when we retire, or there's a change in our life that that's taken away, then that whole circle collapses and we don't know who we are anymore. And we struggle to find who we are. Same thing as if we lose a spouse or if we lose a family member that we're very close with and we're taking care of or that we're closely involved with, then they become who we are as a person. And then when they're gone, you just you don't know who you are anymore. So it's good to restructure that wheel of identity and surround yourself around who we are as a person with our core values and principles. So I encourage you guys to think about that. Remove all of your titles, write them down. I did that. I wrote a list of everything that I am, all the titles and roles that I play. And I imagine if I were to take that all away, who would I be at the end of the day? That's really important to make sure that we have those core values and remember that that makes us who we are. All right, I'm going to talk to you about my time. This is an activity that will help you with self-care. I'd love to hear your responses of walking two miles, taking a bubble bath, any form of self-care that you have is super important to incorporate in our daily lives. And this activity will kind of hold you accountable to it. And at the end of this presentation, if you are interested throughout the presentation, please send me an email, send me your email in a chat, and I can email you out the sheets that will help you hold yourself accountable to this. So my time is an activity you do for yourself to increase pleasure and happiness every day. So the whole purpose of this is to incorporate every day in your life. You take 30 minutes at least. It can be up to an hour, up to two hours, depending on how much time you have that day. But at least find a 30 minute slot in your whole 24 hour day to devote completely to yourself in some form or another. This is time for you to relax, whether it's in a bubble bath or doing yoga, or maybe it's gardening or going on a run or a hike, or just puzzling, anything that you like to do. You can also do this with a friend. So if you are a caregiver of someone, and you know that this person also likes to do puzzles, do a puzzle together. 
and take the time to just relax, not think about doing anything else with the puzzle. Just make sure it's something you enjoy doing and it's not going to be a chore or a burden to do with someone else. I have a little list of some fun things, <laughs> gardening, bowling, exercise, painting or art if you're creative. Um, some yoga is good meditation practice, reading a good book. A lot of us don't have time to just sit and read without feeling guilty anymore. But if you put that in your time as my time, you won't feel as guilty. Maybe build something. Maybe you're a word woodworker or you're building fairy gardens. I know there's a lot of creative outlets. So um, if you want that worksheet or you can just do it on your, on your own, find 30 minutes every day. Put it on the fridge so everyone can see and know that you have that scheduled in your day to do that. And after a week, sit down and reevaluate and see how much better you feel. I promise it'll make a difference even in the first seven days. So other ways to, to keep yourself in line, this helps with self-esteem and helping you as a better caregiver, believe it or not, is keeping your own body healthy. If you have a healthy body, you have a healthy mind, you're going to be able to perform better to be a caregiver or to be a good friend or just as a person in general. Something we need to realize as we age is that our dietary needs change. So it's important to stay on top of it. You're not going to need as much protein and carbs as we did as we as we once did. Um, some good resources to help figure out what your specific dietary needs are is reaching out to your PCP or your dietitian or a nutritionist. And you know, home health agencies have dietitians and people that can help figure that out. Um, senior centers have really good balanced diet balanced diet. So it's good to kind of figure out what your body specifically needs. Um, I'm curious, so I know obviously sugar and caffeine are two things that we need to really keep in moderation and can be a trigger and can feed onto certain um, um, sicknesses, disease, diseases, viruses. So it's good to replace sugar and unhealthy foods with healthier foods, right? At any age in life. So I'm curious to hear, I'm sure we have some health nuts or some people that have learned in their own life what are good healthy substitutes and it'd be good for us to share what we've done. For me, instead of eating sugar, instead of reaching for M&Ms or Skittles, I always have fruit in my house. I have peaches and apples and I have them easy to grab. So it's something sweet, quenches that sweet tooth and it's substituting the place of where I would have candy. So that's some that's a little healthy tip that I do. What are some other substitutes that you guys do for healthy options? You guys can just unmute if you want to speak. Hey, uh, uh, well, I like your idea of the apple and I cut one up in the morning and I put cinnamon sugar on it. And Ooh. that even, I know it's like a little apple pie. So I've gotten a habit of doing that and that really does satisfy a sweet tooth and the cinnamon sugar just, I don't know, I probably should avoid that, but it, it it's very good. That's awesome. Love that. Cinnamon's really healthy for you. It's one of the superfoods, so that's great. If you have a tiny bit of sugar, it's not going to ruin anything. I saw someone say water instead of fruit juice. Fruit juice has a lot of sugar in it, believe it or not. So if you drink water instead, something I do is sparkling water. You can get like the soda water and put little sugar-free flavorings in it. So it tastes like a fun little sugary drink, but it's not. Right. Um, I saw something about, okay, I've been eating more fruits and vegetables. Great. Eating more nuts, almonds, or cashews. That's awesome. Healthy fats, proteins. Um, that's a lot better. To, and it's easy to snack on those than snack on M&Ms, right? <laughs> Good substitute. All right. Those are awesome ideas, guys. Thank you. Okay. Exercise. Keeping your body healthy. That is so important, too. And exercise will look different as we age as well. Maybe we're not running marathons anymore or heavy lifting and competing in bodybuilding shows. It's gonna get, it's gonna change a little bit and that's totally fine. Don't get discouraged. It happens all the time that we're changing. Um, so find new innovative ways to stay in shape. Um, there's obviously gardening is a, believe it or not, a form of exercise. You're bending over, you're pulling out weeds, you're seeding, you're digging, that's exercise right there. Going on walks um, is also a form of exercise, doing yoga, silver sneakers. There's a lot of different ways to exercise. And if you don't know how to, or how to get started, you can meet with a physical therapist or occupational therapist that can look at your body. Maybe you have a, a bad hip or a bad knee and you don't want to just go full out with some exercise and not confident. And so meet with someone to see what's healthy for you. 
and then, you know, go attend some classes. What are some other ways we can exercise that you guys have been doing? I know, I think it was Joan said that she's walking two miles a day. That's awesome. Is there anyone else participating in any form of exercise that's creative or different? Oh, Salt Lake County Senior Centers have awesome exercise classes. Yep, I was at one this morning and they had a yoga class and they were doing all sorts of stretches and fun different exercises on the chair if you need to sit down and standing up. So that's great, take advantage of those. Anyone have any other form of exercise that they've engaged in? Dancing is awesome. It's Dancing. exercise, but it, it's, it's, uh, I don't do enough of it, but it's so much fun. The fourth activities of the, the, on television, the, there are a lot of dancing. I thought, oh, that's a great way to exercise. Yeah, exactly. That's a perfect way to exercise. Dancing is really fun with other people too. It, it keeps, it's a social activity. So it's a good way yeah. to be socially interactive as well. Yeah. I saw one for pickleball. That's one of my favorite sports right now is to play pickleball. Do any of you guys play pickleball? I know it's kind of a, it's been around for a long time, but it's picking up. It's the fastest growing sport in America right now. So if you like to play tennis or ping pong, it's kind of a cross <laughs> between the, the two. So you're not running around as much as tennis but it still keeps you outside and engaged and it's a good physical activity. Okay, those are some good, those are some good ideas, guys, thank you. Balance and flexibility is so important, you guys, especially as we age. Um, we, don't wanna, we, we don't wanna risk falling or having any sort of accident and your balance tends to get a little more off the more we age, it's just natural, it happens to our bodies. So participate in balance classes. That's why chair yoga, tai chi, anything like that is really helpful. You can find it on YouTube if you're not comfortable in a group setting. There's a lot of classes online you can take and do just at home. But practicing balance and flexibility can prevent injury, prevent falls, and it just keeps your the flow of your body moving and it helps with circulation as well when you stretch your muscles. Take it slow. Don't push yourself too hard. You don't want to pull a muscle or hurt yourself or fall over if you're trying to balance on a leg for too long, but make sure you're practicing that some form of that a few times a week. Great. So keeping a healthy body. Oh, okay. Meditation. This is huge. Um, maybe we all meditate differently. This doesn't mean you need to sit in front of candles and chant necessarily. If you like to do that, that's awesome. That's a great way to meditate. But your mind is super powerful. It controls everything in your body, right? It's the most powerful muscle. So if you stay in tune with your brain and your body, it helps keep everything in sync with each other. And you're able to notice when something in your body is wrong or off. So one thing you can do is focus on your hands too. If you're very stressed out, you tend to clench your hands more. If you have anxiety, if you're stressed out, your, your hands are gonna be a little more clenched in fists. Um, you have a lot of nerve endings in your hands, so you'll feel a lot more in your hands. Something I try and tell people, especially seniors, is to stroke your hands sometimes. Just stroke your hands, relax them, and believe it or not, that releases a lot of tension when you focus on your hands. Kind of a fun fact there. I also have a video I want us to watch. This is called the body scan. Um, there's a lot of these on YouTube that you can do first thing in the morning or the last thing before you go to bed. You can play this and it'll scan your whole body just to see, okay, where am I to where am I very tense? Where do I need to relax? What's hurting me? Maybe you don't notice that you have a pain in your neck. And if you sit down and focus on your body this way, it's really, really helpful. So I'm gonna play um a video here. I encourage you guys to um look up some body scan videos on YouTube yourself. There's a lot of three-minute videos that just takes you through um focus on your body, focus on your mind, focus on your neck, and it'll just take you through and you can see what you're feeling. Um, let me find out. Okay, sorry guys, I thought that would work. I was really hoping that would work, so that would be kind of fun, but. Okay, so meditation, really important. Okay, another thing we can do to focus on our well-being as a caregiver or just as people in general is to be a part of something. Group memberships boost self-esteem more than friendships alone. So just having good friends that you call and see every once in a while, that really does help. But being a part of a group gives you a sense of belonging, expectation, a sense of purpose, 
and this helps boost your self esteem a lot. So what kind of groups can we be a part of? We have sports and games teams. We have bridge club, pickleball team. I'm sure your senior center offers some teams that you can be a part of, or just the community in general. Being a part of a senior center, there's a lot of classes that they offer, whether it's art classes or, you know, like exercise classes. You make friends in the class and you're a part of it and you go, it makes you help feel you, makes you help feel a part of something, which is awesome. Even just going to lunch and sitting by your friends and sitting by your group, that's great. There are support groups. If you need support as a caregiver or depression support groups, any there's a lot of um, groups offered that you can find that you can attend and that helps you hold yourself accountable to going and you can be a support to others as well. A walking club. I know that there's a lot of people that put together walking clubs to just go walk every morning and talk. That's great. Craft club. What are some other ways that you guys have found that you feel a part of a group of some sort? Are there any other teams or groups that I'm unaware of in the community that have helped you? My grandma lives in Bountiful and she's part of the Daughters of the Utah Pioneers Association. And it's just a fun way for them to, to get involved with each other. Don't really have a lot in common, just that they're daughters of pioneers to some extent, and they all meet up and do a big luncheon every month, and it's really fun to see everyone. Okay, I got a lot of responses here. We have book clubs at the senior centers. Oh, that's awesome, because then it helps you hold yourself accountable to reading too, right? Book clubs, another one. Bunko, we love Bunko. That's a great club to be part of. And then exercise classes. Can't express that one enough. That's great. Awesome, great responses here. Be a part of something. That's great. Communication. So once we get to a point when we're caregiving, we feel a little awkward or embarrassed, or we don't want to share to the, our loved one or to the person that we're caring for that, hey, I need some time alone to do some things I want to do. And if we leave to go to an art club, or if we leave to go um, on a run or just want to read in your bed for an hour or so, we, we feel a little guilty. And instead of doing that, we just brush off that conversation and just stick to what we're doing as a caregiver. But I think it's really important that we communicate to these people and say, hey, I want to be here for you. I will take care of you as much as I can, but I do need some time every day. And maybe you schedule it in your calendar from 10 to 11. I am busy. I'm doing something for myself. And after that, I will be with you the rest of the day or for X amount of hours. I think there's really good conversations that we can have that doesn't make us sound selfish, but it makes us, you know, have an opportunity to take care of ourselves as well. Is there, has anyone had that conversation before that we talked to someone and said, hey, I'm going to be out of town or I'm going to be unavailable on Friday from 10 to 11 because I'm doing something for myself and it was reciprocated well. I'm curious to hear just some of your experience in these conversations because they're crucial conversations that sometimes we get nervous to have. So I'd love to hear other people's experiences. No one. You don't have to be shy. <laughs> My I had a coworker whose um, daughter would have her babysit her kids a lot. And there were a couple of times where she had to rearrange plans because her daughter would bring her kids over. And as a grandma, she felt entitled to be taking care of these kids all the time and sacrificed a lot of her, my time to be with her grandkids. So one day she sat down with her daughter and said, hey, I love, I love playing with my grandkids and having time with them, but um, I'd love to sit down and maybe schedule times that I'm with them so that I know ahead of time and so I can make plans for myself around that. And it was reciprocated really well. Her daughter said, yeah, that's awesome. Let's do that. And so I think having a scheduled time for yourself, it creates that expectation there. So there's no surprises, no hurt feelings. You both, both parties know that that time is allotted for you. And then you don't have that guilt weighing over your head because it's already pre-planned. Nothing will get in the way of it. And if anything comes up, you can easily move that. And I don't know, it just helps keep the peace there. Any comments on that? Kind of a quiet bunch today. That's all right. Okay. This is probably the most important part of self-care that I want to talk about, especially as a caregiver. 
we never know when enough is enough. We feel responsible for this person and we don't want to let them down or our family down or even ourselves down. We don't want to say, feel like we're giving up, right? And sometimes it's really hard to know when to have help intervene and when to look for other help and interventions. So I think it's important to know that there are many services out there that are here to support you. Um, senior care has come a long way, especially in the last 10 years. We've multiplied our amounts of assisted livings and memory care units and independent livings by almost 100% in the last 10, 15 years. Um, there's a lot nicer, more improved um, services as well. We have a lot of home health agencies, private care duty, caregivers, lots of services out there that can come and help, whether you just need help once or twice a week, or if you need to move someone into a facility to help them. Don't put guilt on yourself. If it's not helping you, it's not helping them either. So you're doing them a disservice if you're putting too much pressure on yourself. That is true. Don't just don't not believe that. <laughs> I promise you that'll make a world of a difference. So know when it's important to have um, these interventions come in. I know there's a lot of services out there. Um, the VA benefits are as well. They, they provide a lot of support and offer help towards these programs. So if you or your spouse or your friend was part of the VA, then look and see what services are out there. Um, they can call and find out or social workers are able to help figure that out as well. We have a great VA in Salt Lake that can help get you in contact with services that you're available to as well. The list just never ends, right? So much out there. Um, has anyone, I'm just curious to hear, has anyone found support elsewhere that has, it was kind of a challenge to take on, whether it's contacting a private caregiver support group or, um, sorry, private caregivers or attending a support group or moving into a different home to downsize, any sort of change in intervention that was hard at first, but you saw the results pay off in time. I'd love to hear a personal story about that and see how it was successful for you. No one? Okay. I can think of one. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, uh, well, I'm a, a veteran, so I have, jo I have certainly taken advantage of veteran groups, and uh, they're great. So uh, if anyone out there is a veteran, take advantage of it because they are good. I mean, they're very supportive. That is awesome. Do any of you guys... Oh, see, I'm trying right now to get VA benefits for my mom who's in assisted living. That's awesome. That is so great. Take advantage of all those services. You worked your whole life for them. Take advantage of them. Reap the rewards, right? <laughs> assisted livings are a hard transition. We had to move my grandpa into an assisted living about five years ago before he passed away. And my grandma felt like she was giving up and having to move and she always said i'll never have a move into assisted living that is just not what we decided to do it's not what we wanted but mm -hmm. as she did she realized not only was it a, a relief on herself because she didn't have to care for him 24 7 it wasn't detrimental to her health but it also was good for him he was getting the care that he needed and he was very social too he'd go down he was in memory care he would go down to the dining room for all of his meals and made friends and was interacting with people. And she, of course, would go and visit him every day for a few hours. And they got that one on one time together. And he was super happy. And she realized that she'd been worrying about this change for so long that when it happened, she wished she had done it years earlier because it was so much better for her and for him as well. And all the kids were at ease going to bed every night, knowing that dad's going to be taken care of. If he has a fall in the middle of the night, mom's not going to be falling with him, <laughs> trying to help him. Right. So things like that. We, we stress out in our minds feeling like we're giving up, but that's not always the case. That extra help can be a help to not only the person you're taking care of, but to yourself as well. I want to recommend to you guys this book. If you guys are readers, I like to share literature. Um, this is a book I read in my, my master's program. I studied gerontology, which is the study of just aging and humans as we age. And especially now, um, we're experiencing a lot of 
caregivers that are caregiving for their parents as well as their children and spousal caregivers. I mean, we're experiencing all sorts of different care caregiver populations. So this book addresses all types. So no matter what kind of a caregiver you are, um, there's a lot of helpful information in here. My favorite one is being a caregiver to a caregiver. So maybe our spouse isn't needing our help or we don't have someone directly close to us who is we are taking care of and we are the POA or the sole caregiver for, but maybe we have a friend or a sister who is in those shoes. And those people need a caregiver just as much as their care receiver needs one, right? So this book talks a lot about how to be a caregiver for a caregiver. I just said that many times. I'm so sorry. That was very redundant, but um, it's kind of a blurry picture. So I wrote down the name of the authors here, Joseph Gogler and Robert Kane. A very good read, has a lot of good stories that you can relate to and learn from if you are a reader like myself. That is the material I have for you guys. I know it kind of went a little early, five minutes early or so, but I'd like to leave the leave it open to you guys for any questions about anything. We touched on a lot of things. Um, just for the next 10 minutes, we have questions and answers. Then I have a little assignment I'd like for you guys to try if you want to, obviously. Um, but yeah, any questions about what we talked about when it comes to health, meditation, spiritual health, mental health, um, my time, scheduling that time, any questions? And I don't even have to be the one to answer. If someone else has a good answer or good feedback as well, pop on. This is a good round table discussion that we can all have. So unmute and ask away. I, I just like to say something about the person that's trying to get her mother qualified or someone qualified for the VA. I think someone mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, that the, the VA go go to the VA. They have people that will actually help you do that. I mean, the VA, the medical center. Well, they have people that will help. Where is that located in Salt Lake City? At the. There, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from. I'm not coming. I'm not in in Salt Lake City, but I know that there's a big medical center there. And in the in the medical center, there's a disability office. There's an office that helps people get actually into the system. And there'll be an information desk when you first walk in, and you can tell them what you want, and they will send you to the right office. Okay. Then that. The VA is actually on Foothill Drive, right by the U, University of Utah. It, it, oh, it, it, it'll it'll be the the medical center, the VA medical center, and they will have everything there in the medical center. Okay, yeah, it's called the George Wallen Medical Center for Veterans Affairs. Okay. okay. See, my mother lives in Michigan, and mm. so we're trying to get. We're trying to get money for her to help pay for her assisted living because she's running out of money. So that's a good resource then. The paperwork with that. Oh. So would they be able to help me there? Yeah. Yes, they will. Okay, perfect. Go to and if not, they'll be able to get you in contact with Michigan as well. Maybe um, the center nearby her that can help her as well. Right. Oh, okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? This is open to everyone. So this is a good time to take advantage of getting some feedback or advice or. While I wait, feel free to interject if you have one. I do want to share with you guys a little challenge I have for everyone. I think it's always good to hear ways to improve and ways to better and change your life, but unless we practice it, it doesn't really help as much. So I have three little challenges that we can all try and do over the next week or longer, hopefully if you want to, to see if this improves yourself at all. Um, my time is that 30 minutes a day allotted for your, yourself. I have a little worksheet that you can fill out with a little calendar and you can check the box if you did it. 
If you want one of those, feel free to send me your email address and I can email it over to you right after this presentation. Um, if you want to do that, so complete that, try for a week, see how you feel. If you like it, keep it going. Um, the second thing is implement one self esteem boosting technique into your daily life for the next week. So we talked about a lot exercise, diet, gratitude journals, another good one. Join a group, be a part of something, meditation. We talked about a lot of things. So feel free to just pick one or maybe two and just try it for the next week or two and see how that helps. Last but not least, if you are a caregiver, um, I encourage you to sit down with that person that you are caregiving for and identify 10 strengths that you guys have in your caregiving dyad. What are 10 things that you guys do well at? Focus on those strengths and that'll help you feel so much better as a caregiver. I realize I forgot the R and four in that last word. I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, we did get a really good comment here I'd like to read. Oh, this is awesome. Um, I found that moving my mom into an assisted living facility actually improved her physical and mental health because she wasn't sitting home alone. That's so true. It's so social and fun. I think we all have this idea of assisted livings as being this dark hospital where it's like a mental institution where they're locked in their rooms. That's not how it is at all. It's very, very beautiful. There's a lot of very beautiful ones all around. You could go on tour and see. They're really fun. They have um, wellness directors that do activities and ways to be social and meet people. And there's great people that move in there. You can, I don't know, it's just such a good environment and atmosphere. I think that we, it's changed over the last bit. And I think if we give our open-minded to it and give it a shot, I think it could be great. All right, we up for that challenge? If we are, we've already gotten some people emailing, you're sending me their email. I'm happy to send you that copy after. Um, I hope that will be helpful for you guys. Any other questions, comments, concerns? With aging adult services, I just want to remind you all that there's a program called Pearls, and you can use Pearls. Oh, Paige, yeah. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? No. Talk about your Pearls. Oh, yes, the Pearls program. Yeah. Just remind them. What was that? Remind them all. Okay. Program. Oh, right. Yes. If you guys live in the Salt Lake County and you attend any of the senior centers there um, and you or your, yourself or someone you know or a friend that is experiencing any form of depression, maybe they went through a life change or grieving or just any form of depression that could use some help, let them know about this program or take advantage of it. You can email me, reach out to me, or it's Marianne, she'll get us in touch. But um, this is a really good program where we help take initiative of your life and do goal setting and problem solving, work together one-on-one -on, -one on how to do that. And the first book sections are absolutely free. So come and do a little trial run. If you love it, you can continue forward with your insurance. If not, you can take what you learned and use it on your own. But I really have a lot of faith in this program. I think it can help a lot of people. So feel free to take advantage of that. Again, it's one of those free services offered to you. Might as well try it if you want and or let someone else know that you can benefit from that as well. All right, that's all I have for you guys. Uh, Marianne, do you want to say anything or Paige, do you want to wrap up? Yes. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. I'll just write it in the chat. Uh, Y'all can't hear me? Oh, you can hear me? Sometimes you can. Yes, okay. Yeah. 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 Fluctuating. It's my, it's my computer. I love it. Um, Salt Lake County so, uh, has caregiver support program. That's where you chat with them. Um, along with the pearls that Kayla was talking about, we have lots. if you are a caregiver. So I'll just put uh, this phone number in the 
chat and you can always jot it down if you like. Kayla, thank you so much for being here. This is a wonderful presentation, very necessary um, and uh, <coughs> important to to supply to our folks. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah, thank you all for being here. I'm going to put that number in. Hang on. It's coming. Is. That's caregiver support. That's caregiver support. Awesome. Sorry, Great well, number. You can always reach out to me or Kayla or Mary. Um, any employees that are here, check that chat box. You need to uh, go to that link to make sure you get credit to being here. For so, and Kayla, thank you. Thank you guys.